introduced to everybody. Mm -hmm. The flavor of love. But do anybody really know like the story behind how you got on Flavor of Love? What led you to even do it in the first place? Um, well, I was uh, I was a fan of the show of the first season, and I uh, I watched when Hoops at the reunion decided that she didn't want to be with Flay. And they had something at the end of the reunion that said, if you think you're a good date or a good match for Flavor Flay, go to this certain website. And I had watched, excuse me, the, sh the rerun or the reunion on um, rerun several times before I actually went to the website. I was single. I wasn't, um, you know, doing much as it related to um, social life or having a good time. So I just did it for fun as far as going online and actually putting in uh, um, an application, so to speak. Lo and behold, VH1 calls me back. And I went on the show. If you remember, I was really quiet yeah. because I was still shocked that I was even there. <laughs> um, but uh, I had a good time. And surprisingly, I won. And here I am today. And what's crazy about it all, uh, when you first like went on the show, did you know that years down the line, all this would come from it? No. Uh, for me, I, I always appreciated entertainment. I went to Detroit High School for the kind of performing arts, so I've always been interested in um, being in the forefront. You can't go on a reality show and not be interested. A lot of people say, oh my God, if they're on reality TV, they're attention whores, they want attention. Well, duh, we're on television. So um, I knew that it would be something uh, entertaining, but I didn't know to what extent this would go. You know, when we first went on the show, the most you had connecting to entertainers was MySpace. Mm -hmm. Now, the world has opened up. That is true, it was just MySpace. It was just MySpace. Yeah. Now you have MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vine. There are some new stuff that I don't even uh, know too much about. But you have World Star, you have the blogs, you have Media Takeout, TMZ, Basta. You have all of these connections to uh, celeb life and entertainment and even things that are not entertaining. If it has something to do with a celebrity or what they're, what they're doing, you now have a chance to be connected to it. And so back then, that was back in 2006, I had no idea that it would snowball into what it has. You know, I, sometimes when I see you, I'm like, she has to be very bold. You're really <laughs> bold. You really, really are. You know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. I put my my uh, myself or my brand, the delicious brand, out there as being bold. But London is kind of shy. I'm goofy and I'm yeah. fun with my family and friends. Yeah. But um, I take that back. London isn't shy. Delicious is shy. But she does the whole Beyonce Sasha thing. Mm -hmm. When it's time to be delicious, she delivers. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, she likes to sit back, just like when Flavor Love. Yeah. People like when you're so quiet and classy on the show. That's really, you know, who I am. And they're like, yeah, but I go on your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and girl, you give us the business. <laughs> that's just delicious at work. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's that's me at work. But um, I guess I am bold. Yes. I am. Let's talk about you being at work. <laughs> right now, I'm starting to see quite a trend with young women. Mm -hmm. And just urban modeling, different mm -hmm. levels of urban modeling. Is there a right or a wrong way to do it? I think there's a right and wrong way to do anything. Um, there is nothing wrong with being comfortable with yourself. There is something wrong with compromising what you find comfortable with yourself. So for me, if you see me do it, especially now, maybe in the beginning I compromised because I didn't know any better or I didn't know what I had to do to maintain. But if you see me doing it now, it's not a wrong way to do it because I'm comfortable with it. I am so comfortable in my skin. Um, I'm 30 plus years old. No, I'm not over 35. And no, I'm not under 31. <laughs> I'm 30 something. I'm 30 fine. <laughs> but I, um, I'm comfortable with, with what I do because at home, I'm in a head scarf, track pants, and a t-shirt. Because I have a little girl, I have a little baby, and I have a 14-year-old, and I'm just relaxed. So the moment that I get a chance to be sexy and be delicious, 
I'm first in line. I want the shortest dress. I want the tightest pants. I want the skimpiest look. I just want to look sexy. I don't want to look like mommy when I'm being delicious. I want to look delicious. I went and got my boobs done. Um, well, tell it. I, I, I went and got my boobs done, and I, I like them. They're nice. I don't have to wear a bra, so I, I like that. <laughs> Before, I had to always have on some type of lift, because they were like down to my, my stomach. And so, people talk all the time, well, she got her tummy tuck. No, I didn't get my tummy tuck, but I don't oppose tummy tucks. Let me say this. Okay. I am not against surgery, and I didn't get my butt done. Actually, my butt used to be bigger, because you've known me for a very long time. Before the show. Have I always had this butt? Yes. I've always had a big butt. <laughs> so when people say, well, her butt is fake. Well, that means I'm doing a really good job and it looks extra because you believe that it's something abnormal. I'm okay with that. But you know what? Me and you, we talked about this before. Like, yeah. in Detroit, it's really not it's normal abnormal. Here. Yo, my hairstylist is here. Her name is Just Jazz. I swear to God, she has a rump roast that looks like something on Thanksgiving. But it is all hers. Yeah. It's a Detroit thing. I mean, we have always had this thickness. Now, it has become a phenomenon where girls want to go and enhance it. I do do things to um, exaggerate it because it's become such a phenomenon. When I was on the Flavor of Love, I was known as the girl with the butt, but it wasn't a big deal then. Right. Now it's a big deal and it's like, well... Is that hers? Because so many people have to enhance it. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm over it, though. I mean, it's, I, I get it everywhere I go. I just pat her on the back and say, you must be really, you know, about something because it's always a topic. Yeah. But they need to go into um, my family history, and they'll see all the wide loads mm -hmm. that I follow, these wide loads that came before me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... I, no big deal, but I'm not against plastic surgery. Uh -huh. If this thing drops, I'll be the first to tell you guys I'm on my way to get a Brazilian button. <laughs> I have no problem with it. I have seen Dr. Curves. You follow him? No. Dr. J. Curves? Oh, he's I, the I, I, I've never really get into it. I, I followed him because he did some work um, on television for Shekana, a uh, T.I. show. Yeah. Who I love. I love Shekana. <laughs> love the whole show. Shout out to T.I. and Tiny. But... I guess I don't have a problem if I ever go to that extreme to do something like that. I wouldn't have a problem saying that. Because it's my body and not yours. It's me. I would have to go and buy bigger pants, bigger underwear, or find me a man that could saddle up and you got keep up me with me. Okay, so okay. I'm like, no, it's no big deal. No big deal. Yeah, it looks enhanced. And that's the way I want it to look. I want to be in history books. I'm almost like, you know how Dorothy Dandrick was and um, Josephine Baker? Yeah. These were black women who had these beautiful, sexy images, or they just came off so sexy. Um, but we were proud as a race of them because of how beautiful and how comfortable they were. We don't have this problem with other races. They embrace women who are sexy and almost... Uh, I don't want to say abnormal, but just stand out for something that they have that is just so different from the norm. That's like Dolly Parton. She's always been known for her boobs. But nobody in her you know, race or in her culture dogged her out for having it. She just was iconic for being Dolly Parton. So one day, I'll look in my grandkids' history book, and I'll be iconic for having the... Black girls there are No different from the Latinos always look to J-Lo and Selena. Yeah, Jennifer Lopez and Selena. So I'm like, okay, this isn't a bad thing. Embrace it. Embrace me. I'll be in your history books real soon. I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's talk about... I I'm just a fan of words. I love words. I love to communicate. So let's throw some words out here. All right. You hear fearless. The word fearless. I hear fearless and I think about Beyonce. She's fearless. I mean, I mean, she's she does what she wants to do, and then she has the nerve to do it well. I just that's what comes to mind when I think of her. I know you've heard me mention her name a few times in this interview. Let you know that's like my idol. <laughs> and now that she's a mom, she's joined the mom team. Yeah. Like she's she's really fearless. And, and, and also with fearless, I think about um, 
women from Detroit, and I'm from Detroit. And when you go after what you uh, you believe in or what you want to do, that makes you fearless because there's a lot to fear around these parts. Yeah, <laughs> Judgment, crime, um, rejection, the possibility of things not going the way that you want them to. Um, so I guess I can equate fearless to myself. Maybe not, maybe not, because I, I fear things sometimes. <laughs> What do you feel? Um, honestly, that that I may die or perish and not win everybody else. Isn't that crazy though? Yeah. That's really crazy because that is so that's un that's unreal. That's unnatural. You can't possibly. Yeah. My brother just stepped in. I'm sorry. It's okay. No. So that's unnatural to get everybody to like you. But I feel like, you know, fuck with me, excuse me. I, I mean, I'm like cool people. So I guess that's my goal. If I never become a star from music, if I never become a star from television acting or from, from movies or reality TV or modeling, I want to become a star because you said at one point she was fearless and we respected her for that. She was real. She was herself. And it didn't matter what other people think. Let's talk about that. I don't know how many. Well, they gotta know because Instagram is just so big right now. But you win a lot of people over. Like a lot of people will say, you know, if they can see the way you look at and fall in love with that. But most people who actually meet you be like, I just love Delisha. She's so sweet, or she's so. Uh -huh. You know it, Dee. Look, no, because I swear to God, I'll be on Instagram battling. <laughs> no, that, that's what I'm talking about. No, Lord, I don't want to die right now, but I would die happy if I knew that a percentage more, and it's not about liking it, it's like, oh, well, God, she's been on everybody liking you. No, it's not that. I just want you to get what I'm trying to give you. You know what I'm saying? I never want to be misunderstood. Now, if what I'm giving you, you just don't like, but you still know what it is that I'm genuinely trying to give you, then that's different. What are you genuinely trying to get with the delicious image and with the delicious brand? Um, What's the goal? Comfort. Just be comfortable. I, I went to Canada, and the people in Canada are just relaxed. Um, have you ever been to a nude beach? No. Okay, so I went to Jamaica. <laughs> I had to do a shoot for Smooth Magazine at Hedonism. Mm -hmm. And I was so pent up. I was almost, it was like the flavor of love all over me. I was, I was there with a bunch of models and, and the magazine, and I kind of clammed up because at any given moment, somebody's twigs and berries are hanging and they're walking past. And right. it's, everybody is comfortable. Fat people, short people, skinny people, tall people. And I was so nervous. So for the first day or two, on the island at this resort, I stayed in my hotel room. And what's weird, they make sure that the hotel has no drapes, no curtains or whatever, because this is supposed to be a nude resort. Right, and so I watched, kind of awkward, but then by day two, I kind of relaxed. And the people there were so real, and so comfortable, and so happy. And perverted. <laughs> How could you not be? Everybody's doing it in, in freaking Jamaica. But it was a perversion that I could be okay with. Because they didn't come on to you unless they knew that you wanted them to. But I guess the whole thing that I took from it was there was no judgment. As long as you weren't hurting, like I said, they didn't come on to you unless you wanted them to. They didn't offend anyone. So that's my thing with delicious. I don't post sexy pictures to offend you. I post sexy pictures to, hey, turn you on. I hope. I hope you like it. If you don't, okay, you pass. No problem. You can pass on the picture. But if I take a picture and I'm turning around looking at my butt, I obviously liked my butt in that picture. If I take a picture and I'm going to kiss, I obviously like my lips or the shade of my lipstick. You know what I'm saying? I was comfortable with whatever I did in that photograph, or whatever I said in that caption. And I just want you to respect me being comfortable with it, and my intentions are not to offend you. And my intentions are not to offend my children. My children are fabulous. 
my 14 year old is the bomb. If I can say she's the best 14 year old I know, I'd be lying. But she is my best 14 year old, straight A student. This last report card market, she did get a B. I was a little disappointed because she's always been straight A. But it's high school and it's a change, so, you know, we'll work at it. But my two daughters are well rounded, they're happy, they're loved. Um, my daughters are in Christian schools, they believe in God, they know how to treat people, they're respected by anyone who meets them, they're respectful to people that they meet. My family loves me, my friends love me. Like you say, in most cases, if you want to hate me, don't meet me. You <laughs> see, if I meet you, you're going to love me. So, I won't have it no other way. So that's, that's all I want. I guess I just, I want, when I give them me, I want them to just relax and receive it. Find the enjoyment in it. It's like it's, I went on a date. I was being a bitch. Because my date took me to a museum. I'm like Negro. I haven't had sex in six months. And I haven't been on a real date. And I don't know how long. I'm not going to say it on camera. It's embarrassing. <laughs> So our first day, you want to take me to a freaking museum? There are not going to be fireworks Fireworks in this relationship is what I was thinking. So he stopped me in the middle of us walking through the museum and said, are you serious? He's like, look around you. Look how awesome this stuff is. So I had to stop and I looked around and it was really, really nice. There was nothing wrong with the museum, and I thought it was boring and was stupid for him to bring me here. I never gone here before. This ain't what I do. But then after I actually sat down and not uh, had a preconceived notion for what it was, now I love museums. So is it like a thing where you're trying to say just try to find the beauty of things and just yeah. help and be more positive? Yeah. Now, now, I don't want my dates to be at museums. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I'm not opposing it either. So that's what I'm, I'm like. You know what? What is that? Is awesome. I heard something so good about that. Like, how could you? What is wrong with that? For women who say, "Oh, I see her butt." I do too. I looked at it in the mirror before I put it on the camera, and it was so nice. Like these are fake, but these are so nice. How could you not like my boobs? <laughs> how could you not like my butt? Oh my God, I'm gonna make you touch my butt. <laughs> I might be going too far. Next interview. No, you're totally fine. But I, I get what you're saying. It just seems like you're very comfortable with who you are. I am. And I guess what I'm really saying is I just want people to see a different side to you because it's not just always about the body or it's about not. the sexiness or whatever. Like people don't even know. How many people know that you graduated college? Hello, said here. I'm a college graduate. <laughs> English education. You know what it is? Is I um I try to give them some of the other side, but people aren't really receptive of that. If it's not salacious, if it's not juicy, if it's not something that they can be catty about, they don't receive it as much. Sometimes I post beautiful pictures of my daughters. Excuse me. And um, I may post a picture of my body and get twenty five thousand likes. I may post a picture of Lexington and get five thousand. Doesn't mean they didn't like it. Just means that as much as you say you don't want to see me sexy all the time, you really don't want to see me successful all the time. You don't. I don't know if it's a black thing, but it seems like black people would prefer to see other black people fail. And I know a lot of people are at home like, no, that's not true. No, it is true. If you, a, a lot of people, and not, not with everybody, <laughs> they agree. We're so but, <laughs> Not with everybody, but with a great percentage, though, of people. They support you as you come up. But oh, when you start going too far, then they start to compare themselves. And they get a little uneasy or uncomfortable, especially if you're, if you're like me. If you're the girl next door, or you like the girl next door, how dare you think that you're going to be a singer too? You already did reality TV and we let you do that. We already won that show and we let you do that. 
We're already on the cover of all these different magazines, and we let you do that. We'd be damned if we let you, K. Michelle, the sister. Now, the reason why I say K. Michelle, I love her. <laughs> I freaking love her. This girl, see, before she did Love and Hip Hop, I knew her for opening up for R. Kelly. And Hot 1075 did the concert at the Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I was there with you and Paige on, actually. And K. Michelle performed. She's an awesome performer. Excellent voice. Beautiful body. Great. The next time I saw her, she was on Love and Hip Hop and she was crying. And she was explaining how the record labels would not work with her because of... They said, well, she's crazy with an incident that took place between her and another artist that's in the industry that she used to date. And you watch this show, and everybody is trying to do something um, in music and also be on reality TV. And it's like, you gonna either do one or the other. We're not going to let you do both. Okay. Not only is she, in my opinion, the star of that show, she did get her record deal. She did put her album out. It was the number one album in the country for several weeks. She then went and performed just recently on the Soul Train Music Awards. And she also won a Soul Train Music Award. <laughs> and she's a reality star and singer and <laughs> a girl who I'm in love with because she has a big barrier. And they call her a fake too. She can give a damn. She tell them to kiss it all the time. I like her. So, um, I guess... People don't want to see her. I'm, I'm reading her page now. And the same people who supported her so that she can go that far, I see them ridicule her. And it's like, wow. First you guys supported the idea that she was doing things, but then the minute that she goes beyond it, it's like, okay, well, she's getting cocky or she's getting arrogant. No, she's getting her life. And it's hard for you to see it because, see, when she was just starting out as a reality star, that's something everybody feels like, oh, anybody can do that. Then when you become A-list, and you become out of the range from the norm, then it seems like we support you less, or, or, or the people of our own race support us less. It's, it's bad, but that's the truth. I think that one thing that can be very universal, whether you want to do modeling or singing, or if you want to go to school to be an English teacher, you sat here and you said something that was very key when you said, I had to stop. I don't give a damn. I really don't yes. care. It's that factor that has to come into your mind where you make a, a definite decision and say, I don't care about anything else that goes on because my mind is focused on this girl. Right. So for your end, it probably is urban modeling or whatever. But that's your goal. And you set aside to do that and you said to yourself, well, I, I don't care. This is what I want to do for my life so I can be comfortable with myself. And you know I don't want to be a model? That's happened. Flavor loved to play, and all of a sudden the phone rings, and all of these male magazines, like you know, they pick the girls from the show. Yeah. For me, Bucky, Boots, a couple of other girls, and they said we want you guys to do the cover of these magazines. And naturally, we were excited. Like this is new. It's like okay, yeah, I'm a model, or I can model for this magazine. It's like okay, cool, I'll do it. And then the next magazine called, and then the next magazine called, and you have calendar shoots, and you have videos or whatever. And then all of a sudden you have the title of being a video vixen or urban model. I don't mind the title, but that was never the goal in mind. You know what I'm saying? Like like you said before, in Detroit having a big butt was normal. Like you look they're everywhere. Everybody is something in the Bell Eye Water. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it I mean it was so when people wanted to shoot me because of it I'm like, oh my goodness, I was just another number at home. Now someone's trying to make me number one for having something that I've had forever. You know? So that's how the modeling thing took place. But that was never a goal. Heck no, I like fried chicken and pepperoni and cheese pizza and cranberry and Hennessy. And no model is drinking it. You that's are telling all, all I know. behind they, the scenes. They want to know where all the juiciness came from. No, I don't, I don't profess to be in a model. I've done it, and I do it, and I think it's a, a beautiful thing. Like I said, I get psyched out. When I get a phone call and say, well, they want you to be in this video, or they want you, I'm like, me? Okay, where do I sign up? You know, I get excited. That's not what I want. I want to do my acting, 
Where can we see? Where are, where are we going to see you soon? Like, oh, within the next five years, where are you going? I don't know. I don't do those. I don't do New Year's resolutions. I guess they're supposed to be healthy. So you can set a goal for the year. But I really have never been one to do that. That kind of stuff depresses me. Because whatever I said five years ago, if I'm not there right now, this place, that sucks. Five years ago, I said that I was going to have an Oscar. I don't even have a Grammy. So who I didn't want to set myself up for that. So I couldn't tell you what I would be doing in five years. I never thought that starting Flavor Love in 2006, to, that I would still be relevant like this now. So, but it all came from just going with the flow. So I go with the flow. Of course I do, I want to do my music. I love singing. I love singing. I just like, that's my number one passion. I like to write the music. And then I like to, to record it. So I promise you, you will hear music from me. I know I always say that to people like, I'm going to give you some music. I promise you, I will. It's just, about having the right project. I remember I did Rum Shake. That, that was just having fun. That was a fluke. It was something that I did because it was just right in front of me and we were in the studio and it was funny. But it took its own snowball effect and became what it became. But in the same token, as much as people still hit me up and say, oh my God, I'm still rocking the Rum Shaker. I hate the sound of it. <laughs> like, I'm like, don't play that again. <laughs> You know, I walk in the club and they intro on me. Delicious is walking in, guys. Let's give it up for Delicious. And I hear, hi, girls. I'm like, no, I will not come in the club if you play that song. Turn it off right now. So I guess I, I want to make sure that when I do finally give you music, that is music that I won't mind being in a hotel elevator or lobby and hearing it playing through the speakers. Or I won't mind being in the club and I hear it, or being in the car. But now, let me hear Rum Shaker on Wax Tax and Joy's mix. I'll be calling the radio station like, get that off. <laughs> I know. So I want to give you my music. You're going to hear it. Um, I did a movie with Michael Blackson called Coney Montana. I've done so far four different films, but that is by far my favorite. Kamal Smith, I love him. I've done I've done a couple of films with Kamal also, but um, I was the lead for Coney Montana, and it's um it's a major major motion picture, and it will be out really soon, and so I'm looking forward to you guys seeing it because it's like um I play a big role, and I like the fact that the producer and the director they were they allowed me to be me with no holes barred. You know, sometimes I go in there on set and I'm in the bottom of the totem pole. Like, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole because there's all these other actors and stuff like that that are on set. And so I feel like, oh, I'm just the reality star, but these are people who are studied and, you know, who have studied this and these, this is really their craft. But when I went on set for Corner Montana, all of those comedians from Rub Man from the Fifth Floor, Big Les, Michael Blackson, they all were so, oh my goodness, they welcomed me with open arms, which made it so great. I got my comedian on. I'm a comedic actress now. It was, it was it's straight you were comedy. Telling jokes? I probably was the butt, no pun intended, of the jokes. Okay. But it was, um, I think my delivery was good. I was able to go to a screening and. That's how that whole incident with Michael Blackson that the world was talking about came about. He brought the film to Detroit, and um, I was able to see it, and I'm excited. I gotta ask you one last thing before, you, before we end this because I just I just saw a flash in that. I'm divorced, but there's something called parting gifts. <laughs> you either get alimony or you keep the ring. <laughs> and you kept the ring. I kept the ring. It's so nice. Is that where your heart still is? Negative. Negative. My heart is with Jasmine and Lexington. Um, my ex and I. See, this is where you got me before. I know. How did this happen? My ex and I. Um, I was head over heels. Yes. I had a baby after 11 years. I would have been done. Jasmine will be out the house in a few years. So for me to lay down and say. Okay, I'll give you a baby. I had to be really in love. Especially in the middle of the height of, of my reality star career. 
after Flav, I dated Buster Rhymes for a year. And then I went straight into my relationship and into my marriage. And I didn't I didn't do any uh any dating because I was good. I was ready for the picket fence, the babies running around, and my husband and my comfortable life. I was even ready to give up delicious. I would have still supported the people who were fans of, of delicious, but I was ready to be a housewife and at home. And um I endured a lot in that relationship. It's weird how a person can be a good man, but not a good husband or, or a, um, a good boyfriend or a good companion. No, he's a good father and a, and a good man. Like anybody who knows him, that knows him outside of a relationship, or my relationship, will easily tell you, oh, that's my dude. Like we, we still cool today. I never really walk away from people and it goes bad like that. But he ruined me as far as I had such a fuzzy heart right now. Like I really, that was supposed to last forever for me. And it's another reason why on my Instagram, I just go so far to the left sometimes because people don't understand for five years, I was just stuck. And towards the latter part of those five years, I was broken. And I kept it a secret because I didn't want, want the world to say, I told you so. You know, I, I knew she wouldn't be happy. I knew she wouldn't last in that relationship. Or I knew people just sometimes, they like to see things fall apart. And they like to be able to say, oh, I didn't think that that was gonna go that way. So I hid what I was, being tormented with from the world for a few years. It, it was crazy. And we said initially, you know, we were not gonna I'm not going to cry. I'm not because I'm so good right now. It's part of the reason why I'm so sexy. Because I am single. <laughs> no more infidelity. And it's crazy. I probably won't end up in a relationship ever again. I'll probably be an old maid and die alone because. I got a thing. I can deal with a lot of stuff, but I cannot deal with infidelity, lies, or abuse on any level. Because I'm sure everybody is like, "Do she mean physical? Does she mean mental, emotional? No abuse. I don't want a man ever hurting me emotionally or physically. Because at the end of the day, I'm a woman." And I'm supposed to be treated like that. Because you know, every magazine I did when I was in that relationship, he was right there on the cover. Everything I did on my Facebook, every red carpet I stepped on, I made sure that the world knew. You didn't hear my name out here with a bunch of dudes. You hear stuff like Drake and French Montana and stuff like that now, but I don't give a damn. I'm single. I, I don't, and I don't mind being connected to those two. I think Drake is freaking awesome. Can I say that? Oh my God, he's so fun. <laughs> so I don't mind that. But I was good in my marriage. And it wasn't good to me. And so, party gifts. Thank you, <laughs> Lee, for sharing that with so me. Welcome. I just appreciate you coming out today. You're so welcome. I appreciate we you. We gotta give hugs. Yes. Mm -hmm. I do handshakes, but you get the hugs. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> hey, can I shout out my Timberlands? <laughs> she had on Timberlands the whole time. I'm not kicking my foot up. I'm, I'm in Detroit. Gonna, I'm not going to